26 Ways to Identify Risks in Your Organization Welcome to the Risk Management of Everything channel. On this channel, you will see videos on risk management and the application of risk management to diverse areas and sectors. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the notification button so you can be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you. 26 ways to identify risks in an organization are discussed in this video. Now, let us start. The first step in developing a risk management plan is to identify potential risks. Understanding the scope of possible risks will assist an organization in developing realistic, cost-effective strategies for dealing with them. What is risk identification? Risk identification is the first step of a risk management process. Risk identification is the process of identifying and evaluating threats to an organization, its operations, and its workforce. Organizations with robust risk management plans are more likely to minimize the impact of threats, when and if they should occur. Creating a risk management plan is about formalizing a risk management process and utilizing a firm's resources effectively. Assessment of a business. Before identifying risks, the organization should assess its operations. Think about the business activities, including critical services, resources and staff, and things that could affect them, such as power failures, natural disasters, and illness. Assessing the business will help to understand crucial aspects of the company's operations. When considering the types of risks exposure of an organization, the management must think broadly rather than just looking at obvious concerns, for example, fire, theft, and market competition. Understanding the scope of possible risks will help the company develop realistic, cost-effective strategies for dealing with them. How to identify an organization risk exposures. It is necessary to understand a business, operations, and workplace to identify its risk exposures. After having a clear picture of the business, it would be easier to identify its risks. Review the business plan and think about what the business could not do without and what incidents could impact these areas. Ask vital questions, including 1. When, where, why and how are risks likely to happen in the organization? 2. Are the risks internal or external? 3. Who might be involved or affected if an incident happens? 26 Ways to Identify Risks in an Organization Here are 26 techniques for identifying risks within an organization. 1. Break down the big picture. Risk identification can be tiring at the beginning of a risk management process. It may be helpful to start the risk identification with a high-level analysis by focusing on things that could go wrong in the company or industry. These can be based on the business strategy and daily activities. Risk is multifaceted. There are many categories of risk, competitive, financial, safety, operational, technological, legal, political, and reputational risks. Break down the organization into each of these areas, and consider the individual weaknesses of each department. Asking self-insightful questions might reveal weaknesses in the organization. For example, is the company's manufacturing process safe? Are the company's employees adequately trained? What would happen if the company lost its biggest customer? If a serious incident occurred, would the company know how to handle it and who was responsible? These crucial questions should be thoroughly explored to identify risks inherent in the company operations and activities. 2. Ask what if questions. Thoroughly review the business plan and ask several what if questions. Ask what if questions, such as What if the company lost its power supply? What if the company do not have access to the internet? What if the company's vital documents were destroyed? What if the company's premises were damaged or unable to access its premises? What if one of the company's best staff quit? What if the company's suppliers went out of business? What if the company's some area of the company's business is affected by a natural disaster? What if the services required by the company, including access roads and communications, were closed? 3. 
interviews. Organizational risks can be identified by interviewing key stakeholders. The interview should be well planned, and specific questions should be highlighted before the interviews. Risk identification through interviews involves asking questions that will assist an organization in understanding the nature of the risk involved with an activity or the entire operation. It is essential to keep the identification of risks specific and practical during the interviews. The results and findings of the interviews should be well documented. The primary aim of interviews is to ensure that organizational risks are identified and managed efficiently. The resulting documentation will enable the company's management to develop and implement a sound risk management framework based on the identified risks. 4. Root Cause Analysis Risk analysis, also called root cause analysis, is the process of identifying and understanding the root cause of a problem. It helps prevent future problems by identifying the root cause of a problem before it becomes severe. Root cause analysis is an analytical process of identifying, quantifying, and managing risks. Root cause analysis is an important part of risk management that facilitates a systematic process to identify fundamental risks embedded in a firm's operations and projects. Root cause analysis can be used as both responsive and preventive measures. Knowing the root cause of risk is essential to controlling the risk. Root cause analysis is often used after discovering a problem because it is aimed at addressing causes, not symptoms. Root cause analysis can, therefore, be used to identify and assess risks associated with a firm's operations or project by addressing vital questions, including what happened? How did it happen? Why did it happen? After addressing these questions, the company needs to develop a plan of action to prevent it from happening again. 5. SWOT Analysis SWOT means strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. SWOT analyzes the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats to an organization. SWOT analysis can be used to identify risks within an organization. The first step is to identify and analyze the company's strengths. Next, identify the weaknesses or things that could be improved or are missing within the organization, or the project being considered. This is where the likelihood of discovering adverse risk and positive risk can be highlighted from the identified strengths. Opportunities refer to positive risks, and threats refer to harmful risks. Opportunities and threats can also be used to identify positive risks and adverse risks, respectively. The strength of the SWOT analysis is that it provides a clear picture of the overall strengths and weaknesses. Analyzing a company's strengths and weaknesses allows managers to identify more effective leadership development opportunities and a better workplace environment. Strengths indicate that a business can resist challenges that might seriously affect its viability. Weaknesses, if present, indicate a deficiency in leadership skills that a competitor could exploit. Strengths should be viewed in the context of a community. Weaknesses may be addressed within that community. Growth opportunities are direct dimensions of strengths. Threats are those that could seriously affect a company's ability to compete in today's marketplace successfully. 6. Risk Register The project management body of knowledge defines a risk register, sometimes called a risk log, as a document in which risk analysis and risk response planning results are recorded. A risk register, often created at the early stages of a risk management process, is a tool that helps a firm to track issues and address them as they arise. A risk register is an essential component of a risk management framework. It identifies and describes the risk exposures of an organization. The purpose of a risk register is to help an organization to manage its risks, demonstrate diligence, and ensure responsible stewardship. A risk register is an essential part of compliance and risk management programs. It is an understood process used to regularly monitor risk, identify new or emerging risks, and set priorities for prevention activities. The main concept of the risk register is to monitor a firm's actual and perceived risks. A risk register can help in identifying risk by monitoring a firm's risk exposures continuously. A risk register will help an organization prioritize a risk, 
assign an owner responsible for addressing the risk, and document the required actions to manage the risk. Risk registers highlight components of a firm's risk hazards, including risk identification number, hazard event, the cause, of the event, consequences, of the event, the likelihood, of the event, the risk score, risk treatments and controls, and residual risk. For risk register, risks may be classified by level and by function. Classification of risk by level will include enterprise risks, asset risks, operational risks, and project risks. Classification of risk by function will include financial risks, social risks, and environmental risks. 7. Probability and Risk Impact Matrix The probability and risk impact matrix assists an organization in prioritizing its risks to avoid time wastage and maximize available resources. The probability and risk impact matrix chart is based on the principle that a risk has two primary dimensions, probability and impact. Probability is the possibility or chance of the occurrence of a risk or an event. A risk is an event that may occur. The probability of it occurring can range anywhere from just above 0% to just below 100%. It cannot be precisely 100% because it would be a certainty, not a risk. Furthermore, it cannot be precisely 0% because it is a risk that is likely to occur. The impact is the impact or consequence of a risk if it occurs. Risk, by its very nature, may have a negative impact. However, the size of the impact may vary in terms of cost and impact on health, human life, and other critical factors. The probability and risk impact matrix chart allows a firm to rate potential risks on two dimensions, that is the probability and impact of risks. This technique combines the probability and impact scores of the company's risks and then rank them based on their severity. The probability that a risk will occur will be presented on one axis of the chart, and the impact of the risk, if it occurs, will be on the other axis. The probability and risk impact matrix, therefore, ensures that each risk is understood, and a response plan can be developed to respond to risks if they occur. 8. Conduct internal research. If a company manages its claims and losses or has employees working closely with them, the organization can perform internal research to identify risks across the organization. With simple observation, the organization might recognize areas where things are not done correctly. Abnormally high costs in one department may also suggest an unmitigated risk. Root causes and occurrences can be identified through data and trend analysis. Incidents and near misses are critical indicators of problem areas that need to be addressed by the risk management team. 9. Conduct external research. Every industry has its unique trends and everyday occurrences. Previous losses, risk management, NT successes, news releases, and legal precedents can assist a company in identifying its potential risks. A new company can learn the risk identification process from old organizations within its industry. Professional organizations can also provide expert advice on potential risks in related and similar sectors. The company research team can also access industry research or trend reports to highlight sectoral risk exposure. Furthermore, analysis of the company's competitors' thread and activities might also help identify potential risk exposures. 10. Seek employee feedback regularly. Everyone from the frontline staff to the CEO will have a different perspective of the organization and its risks while performing their duties. Hence, employees are one of the most valuable resources in identifying risks. All employees, especially key stakeholders, may have some insight into risks they encounter in day-to-day -day business practices that the company might not have considered. The company's management can seek employee feedback anonymously through one-on-one -on -one interviews and group discussions. Allowing anonymous incident reporting may increase the likelihood of response from employees who are worried about repercussions from speaking up. In contrast, group discussions may increase brainstorming and lead to a higher number of identified risks. 11. Analyze customers' complaints. A customer's complaint is an expression of concern or dissatisfaction. Customer complaints range from being unhappy with the product or service to being unhappy with a customer service provider. 
They can be directed to a specific individual or an organization. It is good to record all complaints received by an organization in a designated file for future reference. It is possible to identify risks by reviewing customers' complaints. Analyzing customers' complaints is beneficial by asking vital questions, such as, what do customers most often complain about, or what types of issues do they report? If multiple people are complaining about the same process, there is likely an associated risk. This strategy is most useful for organizations where customers visit a physical location, such as a storefront. However, even solely digital customers may provide valuable feedback that can help identify and mitigate reputational risks. 12. Consider the worst case scenario. Thinking about the worst things that could happen to a business can help the firm deal with minor risks. The worst case scenario could be the result of several risks happening at once. For example, someone running a restaurant could lose power, which could then cause the food to spoil. Suppose the restaurant owner was unaware of the power outage or the chef decided to serve the food anyway. In that case, customers could get food poisoning, and the restaurant could be liable and suffer from financial losses and negative publicity. 13. Checklists. A checklist is a tool that helps individuals and organizations to organize and prioritize tasks. Checklists are also known as task list applications. An excellent example of a checklist is a to-do list, but any list that has to do with intended activities can be considered a checklist. Depending on business operations, creating a checklist can help a firm save time and money in identifying its risk exposures. Checklists can help the company to identify and manage risks efficiently. The company should create a checklist of common risks within its entire operations. After each project, the project team should conduct a post-review to capture the most significant risks associated with the project. This list may be used for subsequent projects. It is worth emphasizing that checklists are great, but no checklist contains all risk exposure of an organization. 14. Brainstorming. Brainstorming is a creative thinking process that helps top management and other stakeholders to identify risks and generate ideas. Brainstorming is a tool for thinking out loud and seeing new possibilities. Brainstorming is a valuable way of identifying a firm's risks. Brainstorming with different people, such as the company's accountant, financial advisor, staff, suppliers, and other interested parties will help an organization to get many different perspectives on the company's risk exposures. The people in the team may constitute a team, depending on the management decision. The brainstorming session should aim at identifying all the risks that could impact the organization's operations. The steps involved in a brainstorming process are Reviewing all project documentation Overseeing all historical data and information about risks from previous projects that are similar to the available data. Reading over articles related to the risks involved. Understanding all organizational process assets. Any information available that will give insight into the issues that might occur while the project is going on. The project manager can also get in touch with experts, team members and other stakeholders who might experience handling risk in similar projects. 15. Brainwriting. Brainwriting enables everyone to share his or her ideas. Brainwriting is a valuable way of identifying risks within an organization or project risks. Like brainstorming, brainwriting is a great way to share new ideas, encourage creativity, and develop innovative ideas. Brainwriting was designed by German marketing expert Bernd Rohrbeck in 1969. Shy or introverted team members may be reluctant to speak in group brainstorming sessions. Brainwriting overcomes these limitations by allowing them to write down their ideas, thereby giving everyone an equal opportunity to participate. It also encourages people to take more time to formulate their thoughts and develop ideas offered by others. Regular brainstorming, where everyone offers suggestions aloud, is a tried and true way to generate new ideas. If everyone is confident to participate and is prepared to consider other people's suggestions, 
Brain writing can be an energetic, exciting, and effective way to tackle creative challenges. However, not everyone is confident enough to contribute to a brainstorming session. They may be anxious about receiving negative comments or worried that their ideas might be unsuitable. Some people may need longer than others to develop ideas, limiting their ability to participate in traditional brainstorming sessions. This is particularly true if the people who speak first end up directing the discussion, as this can mean that their ideas become the only options on the table. In brain writing, however, everyone has an equal opportunity to present their ideas. All participants contribute at the same time, and all suggestions are anonymous. People also have more time to think through their ideas and develop them. This can help boost creativity in identifying project and organization's risks. It empowers people to put forward ideas they might have deemed too risky in a regular brainstorming session. 16. Assumption Analysis The Project Management Body of Knowledge, PMBOK, describes an assumption as factors that are specific, accurate, and honest without proof or demonstration. Assumptions are sources of risks. The company's management should ask stakeholders, what assumptions do you have on the company or a particular project of the company? Furthermore, document these assumptions and associated risks. 17. Process Planning or Flow Chart Process mapping is probably the most common risk and bottom-up control identification approach. Hence, an organization can use a process flowchart to assess its work processes. The flowchart represents the steps to be followed in a process and show the sequence of a business operation. Process flowchart assists in identifying steps in the company's processes and risks associated with each step of the operations. The company should identify and understand what could prevent each step from happening and how that could affect the entire process. 18. Inspection. An inspection is a formal, structured examination of the physical working environment and the tasks within it. Inspection of premises and processes can assist in identifying potential risks associated with processes, operations, and premises. Inspections are a vital monitoring technique to ensure continued adherence to good health, safety, and risk management standards in the workplace. The physical inspection aims to identify hazards that do not comply with a specified standard to rectify the identified faults. A detailed report should be prepared after the inspection. An inspection report should highlight the hazards of concern, identify actions to eliminate or control the hazards, prioritize the actions to be taken, and state responsibilities and expected dates of actions. A thorough examination of an inspection report will enable an organization to identify its potential risks. 19. Scenario Analysis A scenario analysis describes possible future situations, including paths of development that may lead to those situations. It is about preparing for a variety of possible events and impacts. Organizations create and explore scenarios by asking questions like, what would happen if? Scenario analysis can be used to broaden perspectives, raise questions, and challenge conventional thinking. The scenario planning and analysis process can be a method to communicate and promote a shared understanding of emerging risks across an organization. The organizations can also use scenario analyses to assist with goal setting, decision making, and strategic planning. This method can assist leaders in looking for new growth opportunities in an uncertain future. 20. Delphi Technique The Delphi Technique is a method used to estimate the likelihood and outcome of future events based on the results of multiple rounds of questionnaires sent to a panel of experts. The Delphi method consists of several rounds of written questionnaires that allow experts to give their opinions. After the experts answer each round of questionnaires, the facilitator collects all the answers and provides a summary report of the answers to each expert. Then, the experts review the summary report and either agree or disagree with the other experts' answers. The experts then fill another questionnaire that allows them to provide updated opinions based on what T. Hey understand from the summary report. The Delphi method becomes complete when a consensus of forecasts has been achieved. 21. Documentation Review 
Documentation reviews are structured reviews of a firm's operations and projects to identify the organization's potential risks. A document review involves reviewing vital documents, including process plans, project plans, operations manuals, resource schedules, and requirement documents for any inconsistencies. Documents may be in various forms, including previous events reports, project files, plans, assumptions, contractual agreements, and other information required for process planning. The results of a documentary review will assist the company in identifying and analyzing its risks. 22. Risk Mapping A risk map, also known as a risk heat map, is a data visualization tool for communicating specific risks an organization faces. A risk map helps organizations to identify and prioritize the risks associated with their operations. Risk mapping will assist a firm to have a thorough understanding of its risk profile and appetite and the nature and impact of risks to improve the organization's risk assessment model. In an organization, a risk map is often presented as a two-dimensional matrix. For example, the likelihood that a risk will occur may be plotted on the x-axis, and the impact of the risk is plotted on the y-axis. The identified risks can then be classified into high-frequency and high-severity categories. Suppose the organization is dispersed geographically and specific risks are associated with some geographical regions. In that case, risks might be illustrated with a heat map, using color to illustrate the levels of risk to which individual branch offices are exposed. The first step in creating a risk map is to identify potential risks. Identification of inherent risks is the first step in creating a risk map. Risks can be broadly categorized into strategic risk, compliance risk, operational risk, financial risk, and reputational risk. However, organizations should aim to chart their lists by considering specific factors that might affect them financially. Once the risks have been identified, it is necessary to understand what kind of internal or external events are driving the risks. The next step in risk mapping is evaluating the risks, estimating the frequency, the potential impact and possible control processes to offset the risks. The risks should then be prioritized. The most impactful risks can be managed by applying control processes to help lessen their potential occurrence. As threats evolve and vulnerabilities change, a risk map must be re-evaluated periodically. Organizations also must review their risk maps regularly to ensure key risks are managed effectively. 23. Analyze past events. Think about past events that have occurred and their impacts on the company's operations and profitability. Safety management entails planning for T. He worst while expecting the best. Although pessimism is not often encouraged in the workplace, but it is good to consider critical questions such as. What is the worst possible thing that could happen to the company? What are the past adverse events within the organizations? What were the outcomes of those events? Could they happen again? Addressing this question will help in identifying the firm's potential risks. Think about what possible future events could affect the business. Analyze the scenarios that might lead to an event and what the outcome could be. This will also help the organization to identify risks that might be external to the business. 24. Thinking pessimistically. Although pessimism is not often encouraged in the workplace, taking time to ponder pessimistically may be helpful to identify a firm's potential risks. Hence, it might be beneficial to ask specific questions, including What is the worst possible thing that could happen to the company? If there was a day where everything went wrong, what would that sequence of events look like? While being overly pessimistic may not be the best way to run a business, but it is beneficial when identifying risks. It is crucial to avoid overconfidence and think something cannot or will not happen. The company's risk analysts should challenge all assumptions about potential risks to be prepared for any or all the risks before they occur. 25. Consult an expert. The company will have relationships with multiple people that could help in identifying risks, such as insurance brokers, accountants, and financial advisors. Insurance brokers know the company's claim history, 
which means they can provide insight on trends. If the company experienced the same type of losses several times, it suggests that the risk is not well managed. Brokers may also play important roles in assisting the company in assessing its business risks and recommending insurance coverages to protect the firm against such risks in the future. If they do not provide this assessment service, they can probably recommend a good consultant who can. Similarly, accountants and financial advisors will have insight into the types of the company's reoccurring expenses. They can also advise and identify financial risks within the organization. 26. Use models and software. Organizations can identify potential risks with operational risk identification tools, including models and software. Risk identification software assists businesses to plan and control their risk identification process by using computerized tools to allow managers and project teams to communicate, share project data, highlight identified loopholes, and review identified risks. Managers can use such software to develop to-do lists, schedules, templates, and checklists to establish and track the workflows for identifying organization and project risks. All the information gathered and analyzed during the risk identification process, using risk identification software, will provide a foundation for further risk analysis, evaluation, and estimation. There are several analytical tools and technological strategies that business organizations can engage in identifying and evaluating risks. Simulations and scenario role-playing are examples of models that organizations can use to identify their risks. Criteria for selecting good risk identification software include usability, user interface, compliance management, prediction capabilities, incident navigation, reporting and analytics, integrations, and value for money. Having discussed 26 ways to identify risks in an organization, let us now discuss risk identification mistakes that organizations should avoid. Risk identification mistakes organizations should avoid. Think about it. 90% of all risks can be eliminated or significantly reduced through essential risk management. A risk identification process should be adequate to ensure that an organization identifies critical risk exposures. Here are seven risk identification mistakes that organizations should avoid. 1. Failure to recognize risks early when it is less expensive to address. 2. Not iteratively identifying risks. 3. Not identifying risks associated with critical stakeholders. 4. Not using the appropriate risk identification techniques. 5. Failure to identify risks that are peculiar to offices or branches in different geographical locations. 6. Failure to make risks visible and easily accessible. 7. Not capturing risks in a consistent manner. Conclusion 25 ways to identify risks in an organization have been discussed in this video. After identifying an organization's risk, the next thing is to create a risk management plan that efficiently tackle the identified risks. Once you have identified risks relating to the business, you need to analyze their likelihood and consequences and then develop options for managing them. I hope the video has been helpful to you. Which of the risk identification techniques discussed in this video do you consider to be most effective in your organization? Please post your response and comments below in the comments section. If this video has been educative and beneficial to you, then, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you for seeing the risk management of everything videos. We love to hear from you. Please post your comments and questions in the comments section below. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe to our channel, Risk Management of Everything channel, and press the notification button so you can be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you.